What's up, everybody? Welcome to the first Hogwarts Legacy gameplay stream. I'm Chandler Wood, community manager here at Avalanche Software, and we've got a lot of Why really exciting stuff to show you today. But before Arabic. we get into showing you the game and gameplay, I have a few <laughs> wonderful guests that, that I need to introduce you to. Uh, first up, we have our community guest host. He brings you the latest and greatest in Hogwarts. Yeah, this is the same guy that did the unboxing. Let me be clear, he seems like a sweet guy. He's doing great work. It's not his fault the collector's edition is so stupid. Like, let's be real. It's not his fault. Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> I'm James Whitehead of Expecto Go, bringing you guys the latest and greatest in Hogwarts Legacy <laughs> content. And uh, I am one half of Expecto Go, the better half. Uh, my wife, Sue, uh, represents that other half. So um, I'm excited to be here. And thank you, uh, Avalanche Software, for inviting me. I cannot wait to go over this game. Like, I just got to say that. <laughs> oh, yeah, Ben. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Uh, and we've got two people from the studio, just two of the many people bringing this thing together, uh, the magic of Hogwarts Legacy. Game director, Alan Tu. Hello, everyone. And senior Is environment artist and Hogwarts expert, Boston Madsen. So thank you for, for taking time out of your ah. very busy schedules right now to sit down with us to help us show everybody gameplay. Uh, so what we're going to be showing you today, first, the character creator, because you're, it's your legacy. And <laughs> you have to create yourself when you get into, uh, to, to get into Hogwarts and bring your whole authentic self to Hogwarts. So we're going to show you that character creator. Then we're going to dive into a tour of Hogwarts, and it is... It's just a small tour of Hogwarts, <laughs> right? Because Hogwarts is huge. Hogwarts is really big. Uh, so uh, we're going to be showing you a little bit, but it's still a lot. So, <laughs> and finally, ending up with uh, combat. I'm sorry, it's a little, it's a little weird to me that this is so candid. Like, I was expecting it to be a little more polished and scripted. Oh, they have it on the desk! Look! They have it on the desk! It looks just as stupid as ever! ...create this character. So, Andrew, who is going to be doing all of our gameplay capture today, uh... <laughs> <laughs> is uh, going to be handing you the controller. Oh my gosh. All right, I won't break anything. <laughs> All right, so what are we looking at right here on this screen? Um, these are your presets. So a lot like uh, other games, there's there's some initial settings that you can put up, put uh, choose for your character mm -hmm. um, that just kind of get them into like the ballpark of what you want to be who you want to be and what you want to change. Oh man! And then once you're in that ballpark, all the other. I need generic to, white uh, guy number four. To be exactly who you want to be. It's, our, it's my go-to. Goal with this is to make sure that for anyone that fantasized about bringing themselves to the school yeah. for the very first time, yeah. that they feel like they have the options in order to represent who they are and and essentially bring themselves to Hogwarts or whatever character they want to bring to Hogwarts. Oh my God! And options galore. Uh, do you mind if I try to put myself in here right quick? It's all about you. Okay, 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 okay. All right, all right. So, oh, okay, yeah, that's me. That's me. We're here. We're here. That's me right there. All right. So let's. That's the one. We're so, pretty close, but let's like let's look at let's look at everything okay, here. Okay. You know, play here. around with some of these options. Like really. All right. So what are we looking at with this option over here with the tab? I see face stuff. Yeah. So a lot face of the different stuff? faces that you saw in the. In the previous screen, all those mm -hmm. faces are are choices that you have here. So Honestly, this looks pretty can, good. Now you're just kind of getting into the details in yeah. your face shape, in your skin color, um, and then because we knew a lot of people going right in are going to want it right away. Yeah. Even though it's an option later in the game, yeah. uh, you can collect different types of glasses, put them on later. Uh, we give you some options right up front if you want to have glasses for your character. Oh man! Oh my gosh! Look at the structure of the faces with this. Wow! You guys. Wow. Crazy. I like that. I don't think my face is that skinny, but I think we'll go with that. I think we'll go that route. Uh, and down here is this. Those are your glasses. Okay, there. just that. There's going to be people upset oh, that there aren't more options for plus size <laughs> faces. Oh man! And this is just some. I'm calling it now. Options, I'm assuming. Yeah. Uh, so through the course board. of the game, there's a lot. There's a lot of different uh, options that you'll keep unlocking. Okay. So as part of kind of like gear for the character, there's lots of different classes. There's even masks. There's all kinds of things uh, over the course of the game. I count all Victorian era though. Yeah. 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 Right up front. Really Such a good call. Such a good call. Oh my gosh. All right. So now, oh my. Oh, we can go sleek on this one with the hair. <laughs> I spend a lot of time here just like dreaming about my different characters. Oh my gosh. Like. The pony. 
I, the thing, Honestly, I'm the hair doesn't look bad either. Whenever I see any the hair looks pretty good. They like, they really did just <laughs> like <laughs> sit down <laughs> and then film <laughs> themselves like messing around. Like this is the most oh, casual showcase I've ever seen. Like, like it's crazy. I kind of like it though. I'm I'm digging it. It's just much less like corporate shilling scripted crap, you know? It, it's much more real. I, I appreciate it. Is this the first time we've actually seen the UI? Look at the Hufflepuff common room, I'm assuming. I mean dorm room. Dorm room. Yeah, yeah. This is awesome. But Alan, what are we what are we seeing right here with the UI? Because this is our first look. Yeah, first look. That's what I thought. So um right now we know there's been a lot of questions about uh about about the HUD because this is the first time we're showing it. So um, kind of going over from right to left, on the bottom right is what we call our spell diamond. Mm -hmm. So those are, everything that you see in it are slottable spells. So we have over 20 slottable spells that you can earn over the course of the game. Okay. okay. And, and that's where the player can place them and use them and access them very quickly. Um, to the top left of that is you'll see the D-pad and on the left is an eyeball and on the right is a bit of a grid. So uh, the eyeball is an example of one of, not a slottable spell, but what we call an essential spell. Um, there are certain spells that are used in very specific contexts or, um, or that we just want on the controller at all mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. And Ravello is one of those. That's okay. left on the D-pad. On the right on the D-pad is that grid represents where you might slot spells. And so okay. right now, today, we're not gonna be going into the spell slotting menu because we feel like there's a lot of spoilers there. You know, <laughs> like what are all the spells and what I, can we I do? I would like spoilers, but I, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we do wanna make sure there's still some goodies left to share with mm -hmm. everyone. So even and if they're then, not in the uh, quick the menu, side, you can still get the, to them one quick. Button next to it. Uh -huh. That's another thing where we don't want to spoil, but basically that's where you access your tool wheel. So there's a lot of, magical tools that you're going to be uh, kind of brewing and growing over the course of the game. <laughs> and so that's where you would access them rapidly is our tool wheel. Okay, cool. Um, there are a few things that I left off the table on the right. Uh, the green bar is your health, and basically there's a potion next to it. That's how you might heal mm -hmm. the bar above it. We're keeping a secret for now. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, all the way on the left is our mini map with a kind of overhead view of where you are currently yeah. in your common room that updates as you travel through um, Hogwarts and beyond out into the world. And for those those fans out there that aren't a huge fan of minimaps, because we know they exist, there's also options to remove the minimap oh, and cool. turn on or off different elements. Cool. Oh, I like that. You yeah. immerse yourself. Yeah, yeah. In, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we'll go more into the spells as we get into combat, but that's kind of that's that's what you're seeing there. And this is our HUD. Also, Andrew's giving us a, a good a look brothel? over here. I want to I want to call out. Uh, I'm I'm a big fan of the there bedside be. tables in the dormitories. I just realized I covered um, up. Okay, hold on. God damn it. <laughs> Very nice bedside tables. They are nice bedside tables. Yeah. <laughs> the honey colored wood was mentioned in the writing. It's part of lore. It's part of lore. There we go. All right. So now we're walking out. I like the UI in chess. We, we really tried making these it's low clean. ceilinged dorms to give you that badger set yeah. <laughs> sort of feel. And the first thing I know is the music. The score is amazing with this. Gorgeous. And, yeah. and I'm calling out here, uh, th this is unique music that you're hearing for the Hufflepuff common room. Go back to those common room videos we released, you'll notice the music's a little bit different, and that is entirely intentional. We just want to welcome you to your common room in every single house, just <laughs> a little bit differently. Begin customizing that experience right away. Oh my gosh, that's so off. Look at that. So, I mean, beautiful design. I, I, we could spend like the entire rest of the stream just in the common room here yeah. <laughs> and talking about it. And I'm sure Boston and James could be like just <laughs> geeking out over it. You can see in our pause menu, it's got this book theme. Wow. That's your wizard's field guide. And you can see your house kind of crest right, overlaid middle, yeah. over it. Right? Okay, okay. And you can see that on your level as well. So that the field guide has this magical property of looking out into the world around you. Mm -hmm. And the reason why it's on loan from the Ministry of Magic and the professors so have cool. granted it to you as a late fifth year student you is because they want it to help you catch up to the other kids. Mm -hmm. And its magical property is to discover different opportunities to learn and grow all around you. So the way it works is as you discover gameplay in the game, it actually recognizes that as a challenge, which is kind of locked into there. Okay. And Andrew, if you go in there, 
you'll see different types of challenges that are combat challenges, wow. quest challenges, exploration challenges. That was clean. And you can see field guide pages are on there as yeah, well. Yeah, 1%. So, we, uh, yeah. We unlock that one field guide page. Yeah. That, that entire category is one of the ways that uh, the book itself kind of fills out into the school and spills out into the school mm -hmm. and kind of hides itself with different types of challenges and different things to do around the school <laughs> that you're that actually going so to cool. interact with to help you grow as a wizard and practice your spells. And so that thing that we just saw is not just a field guide challenge and a way to earn yeah. XP. It's also something that uh, that players can use to learn about the school as they're traveling around. They spot these little secret facts and they can kind of play a little bit of a game discovering all of them. And there, there, there are over a hundred field guide pages just in Hogwarts alone. Oh, so. Little oh. glimpse of the grand staircase yeah. here. We're not gonna... <laughs> Circular staircase. No, all, all the you can also tell hours. just how it passionate they are. Like he's smiling so much just right describing so it. Cool. You don't see that a lot, amazingly yeah, enough. Travel. And we're going out. Look at that. This is where the students would normally kind of congregate. Thank God there's no kind of chill load out, screen. play, meet each other outside of the great hall before and after meals. And, and an uh, opportunity to uh, talk to somebody, get a get a yeah. quest giver here. Is everything all right? Yes. I'm sorry. I'm just. Ooh. I'm Nelly, by Ooh. the way. I'm just so excited that the oh, Dedalian no. keys are back. Oh, For God. what keys? The Dedalian keys. Oh, Surely shit. you've seen them flying about. <laughs> Rumor is that a former headmistress, Professor Moll, conjured them to protect the contents of oh, certain no. locked cabinets years ago. Oh, Professor God. Professor Black couldn't be bothered to disenchant the keys, and they appear every few years. You should try to catch <laughs> one. Well, <laughs> why would I do that? Each key will lead you to a locked cabinet somewhere in the castle. If you can manage to get the key into the cabinet lock, not an easy task, you may find a reward. For me, it, so what it sounds like to me is heavy compression. Perhaps I'll give it a go. I hope you do. In fact, I think I heard one of the keys in the astronomy tower. You should listen for them. So it's kind of side quest to really, it's a cool way to interact. <laughs> so it's it's basically when they take the audio, they flatten it to try and make it more consistent like that, as well as teach you from recording to recording. To Hogwarts, I think. <laughs> but it doesn't sound yeah, natural. Absolutely. Yeah, so it, the students are a way to kind of like flesh out the school opportunities around it. What, I what hope we that's can do. And then those interactions, not uh, different permanent. interactions. I'll be back to playing Snake Pit and Jackstone by myself in no time. I love that interaction with her because there's so many ways that you can go with that. You can like, you can feel for her. You can be a jerk to her. You can be like, yeah, that was a lot better than the garden one. The garden one felt weird, mean, like, <clears> like, like yeah. immediately. And your opportunities to be mean there aren't over. The facial animations are pretty solid, if in my opinion. No two hallways should look the same in Hogwarts. It's a, it has a lot of personality. Every hallway should be a little bit different, and that's mostly to help orient the players, right, to right. help you not get lost. Right. But. Uh, uh, this is Hesperus Hall. That's a little nod from the Marauders, a name that came from the Marauders map. But every hallway will have a little bit of a different personality. And it's a good touch, and it's important to remember. Personality. Like, they I have like to that. make everywhere yeah. you yeah. are yeah. in the yeah. castle yeah. feel different. Hogwarts has character. Hogwarts is its own character, no matter where you go. Yeah. Feels just a little bit different. Yeah. It's a sentient castle full of magic for hundreds of years. Yeah. It's going to kind of and grow full and develop. Of, uh, oh, I heard something. Uh, yeah. Speaking of characters. Speaking of magic, <laughs> Mr. Magic himself. <laughs> I teach our poltergeist for team. You know, we talked about building on lore too. I know there's that statue over to the side. Oh, yeah. That's Do you know who that is? Lachlan the Lanky. Yeah. And he's yeah. got his, his bow truckle friend. And, <laughs> and I think if players don't know, there's another well, Revelio sorry. page there. Yeah, yeah. there's a, a map of Argyllshire. We know the fat lady. Hides there. Hides behind it. That's right. Well, the third, <laughs> third book. But sometimes a, a hallway has personality by how it looks. Or we just passed a music hallway where the portraits have kind of taken it over, and um, so the sound makes it really unique. Hello, Lucan. May I use the training dummy? Of course. I'll fetch it and give you a list of combinations to practice. Ready to have a try now? That would be wonderful. Be sure to cast all of your spells before It sounds like the down. protagonist's voice is overprocessed. Stop practicing before you finish all of them. With like the pitch That's modification. It's a really good opportunity to now jump into combat because really in the game this is going to be uh, the first time where you yourself get to learn about combat and combos in a big way and in a new way. Uh, for me personally this was where the game like really starts to open up to the possibilities. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
So we've set up a we've set up a training dummy, and this is kind of an activity where you're supposed to execute according to kind of the iconography on the top. Now, uh, what we see on the top is the Accio spell followed by four what we just kind of lovingly refer to as basic shots. Um, <laughs> uh, there are certain spells that the wizards kind of like use, just kind of fling. Andrew's using one now. And you trigger that by tapping R2 on your controller. So you mm -hmm. can see in the corner R2. So if you tap R2, that throws out a basic shot. But that R2 is also your gateway to all of the, the uh, spells that you might slot. So if you okay. hold R2 instead, you can see how the diamond expands. And if we let go, you see how it contracts. Yeah. And so if you hold it again, it expands. And so when it expands and all the spells that you slotted while you're holding that button can now be tapped with your face buttons. Awesome. And not only that, but over the course of the game, you can gain um, additional yeah, spell diamonds up to four additional ones so that you can slot up to 16 spells, you yes. know, pretty much instantly. And then that helped us um, fulfill the fantasy of in combat, I need to be able to access things very rapidly. Yeah, that's pretty and, good. And so you learn over the course of these events, you know, how to juggle not just the spell casting, but also it reinforces um, an understanding of another feature of the wheel, which is their cooldowns. Mm -hmm. So as you're casting spells, just to make sure that you're not just kind of like repeatedly using one thing over and over and right, over again, right. you can see cooldowns on the spells that he's using uh, on the wheel. And then as you progress through the game, there are different things that can affect things like cooldowns through your talents, uh, different things that okay. allow you to kind of like okay. juggle and adjust and, and wow. update those things. And so if you hold down our R2 and you tap the D-pad, it will switch between your other diamonds if you've unlocked them, and and that's how you access all those. Pretty pretty handily finish these these other students off here. This, win this duel. Look how fast it is. Honestly, dance. this is way better than I expected. <laughs> <laughs> like way better. Yeah, it really felt like. And that is more or less gonna wrap it up for us for now, for what we wanted to show you. No. Character creator, <laughs> tour of Hogwarts, and uh, just that that little taste of combat. Uh, but we we didn't want to leave you without well, maybe a little taste of something that that we're uh, we may show in the future, may show next time. Uh, you know, so leaving the castle, uh, going out here. Um, more more owls uh, confirmed. <laughs> owl mail. Uh, there's the owlry again. Yes, all of the owls. Uh, but yeah, just heading out here again to show you like from Hogwarts to the world beyond Hogwarts. And oh, man. The, this is not somewhere where we're going today, but uh, we'll, we will definitely be taking you in the future. Oh my God. A little glimpse at the, the scale of the castle back there. Um, so not everything, but mm -hmm. there are certain things uh, with hairstyle, hair color, uh, so kind of like core shapes, okay. you know, like okay. with the body and face, not after the fact. Okay. Um, but there are lots of things. There's kind of like a barber shop in Hogsmeade that you can go to. And of course, there's a wizard barber. You, yeah. right. yeah. you could change your hair color for... Can oh, you hold him on like a pistol? Oh my gosh, that would be so cool. <laughs> now, just that being said, like, what other game has come out anywhere near recently where they've shown off this much stuff before launch? Like this transparently. It almost never happens. Like th this is as good a sign as you could expect. You know, Elden Ring, they did like a couple gameplay things, but they didn't do developer walkthroughs where they're answering community questions. They didn't do anything like that. You know? So, I don't know, the, the big, sorry, hold on, hold on. The big red flag for me right now is the the vocal compression it sounds really rough like let's just go back to this and see if we were being unreasonable is everything all right yes i'm sorry i'm just I... so that for one it's too loud um it doesn't sound natural it sounds like she's talking right into your ear and i think that that's an issue uh, secondly, I think it's over compressed. Most voices, they go loud and then they go really soft, right? But so like I'll bounce between down low and then I'll go really loud when I get excited, but then it bounces around and your voice commonly does that up and down. When the audio signals over compressed, instead of going up and down really heavily, it compresses. So it goes up and down, up and down, up and down. 
within a very narrow range. And it sounds weird to us. The only times when it sounds right is in like radio, when voices are heavily compressed, right? That's when it sounds sounds fine. So like I could even do it with my microphone here. I have a, a compressor. So if I compress it down like this, and let's just say I compress it like crazy, and let's go uh, like this, and then if I compress it even lower than that, it's gonna sound really compressed no matter where I'm going, and it's it's gonna be a little weird here. Oh, like this, like this. So now it's like really compressed and it sounds really freaking weird. It, it doesn't sound right, right? It's horrible. But when it's back to normal, it sounds fine because there's variability, right? So uh, it sounds like you're in a box, exactly. And that's exactly what's going on here. I'm Nelly, by the way. I'm just so excited that the daily Where it's over compressed and it doesn't fit in with the world. The good thing, well, it could be a good thing, is that usually nowadays when games are massive, the audio files are raw and then they're processed individually, which is why over here, this character, her dialogue sounded different. I'll see what I can do. I'd appreciate that. I still think the main character's voice is overcompressed, but this sounds different and it has a different set of filters on it. Um, so it can be changed and altered dynamically. So that's a good thing. The problem would be if they saved the files and already processed them. Because you can't unprocess a vocal recording like that. It's like changing a Word document and then hitting Control S or like saving it as a PDF versus keeping it in the doc file, the docx file. Because in the docx, you can still change it, you can change formatting, you can bold it, you can do other things. But once you save it as a PDF, it's locked in. You can't change it, right? So that's my concern here. Now it could be considering how janky the rest of the stream was, it could be that it was just how they recorded it. That's a thing that happened. Bear in mind, a lot of games that release nowadays have a lot of like audio options. So for example, in uh, Plague Tale Requiem, they have a ton of audio options. Um, the showcase is in 4K. Okay, I'll pull that up. They have a ton of audio options where you could go in and tweak it so, you know, it's specialized for headphones. You could over compress it if you wanted to have less dynamic range. So loud and soft sounds are about the same, or you could expand it. So it's full dynamic range. All of that stuff was in there. Hopefully these same audio options are in there. And the thing is, what's weird is that the, the exploration and the sound effects out in the world all sound tremendous. So I don't know how on earth they dropped the ball this badly with dialogue. Like dialogue is very important. Yeah. So um, these are. But the music design, the spell effects, all of that sounds great. But once you start talking to characters, it sounds really weird. You'll notice a bridge over there. That's a place you can go to. You know? Yeah. So I don't know what to make of it. I hope they answer that. I hope. Maybe I'll tweet at them. I don't. I'm not verified or anything. I didn't pay eight bucks. Sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> but maybe I'll try tweeting them, and we'll see if we can get an answer on whether or not the audio has more options, or if that audio compression is a mainstay. Because it and that was rough, man. But other than that, like, do I have anything negative to say? I really don't think so. Like, it it looks really good. The ability to explore Hogwarts is freaking amazing. Pay the damn eight bucks. I don't think you're allowed to anymore. I think they turned it off. You can't actually buy it now because they had too many imitation accounts. They thought surely if you pay eight bucks, you won't you won't waste that money to imitate Elon Musk or something. People started doing it anyways. And uh, it's I mean, it's a little funny. It's a little funny, but everyone hates you. I mean, this looks good from what they said. Also, this is a PS5 dev kit. Okay, so this is allegedly running on a PS5. This is what it would look like. And from what I can tell, it's 30 frames. Now, they're only streaming in 30 frames, so it's possible the game is running at 60, but it's captured in 30. It's possible, right? I I know maybe I'm like, maybe it's an L take, as somebody on, on Twitter said, but I do not think 
a prerequisite for a good game is 60 frames. I understand people like 60 frames. I love 60 frames. I get motion sick if a game doesn't have a high enough frame rate, okay? I'm a, I'm a frame rate snob, but does a game... Will a game automatically be bad because it runs at 30? Absolutely not. Some of the greatest games in history were released at 30, right? Red Dead Redemption 2, The Last of Us, all launched at 30. So it doesn't mean that it's going to suck if it runs at 30. And I would rather a stable 30 that looks good like this than a blurry, fuzzy, glitchy 60. That's my personal preference. Now, if they add a performance mode, that would be sick. We'll see. I I would say like Gotham Knights, there was obviously no excuse for that game not having a performance mode. They tried to say it was an online thing, which is ridiculous. Come to find out once the game launched, it was just because the game was unstable and they couldn't get it to run even at 30 frames reliably. So it makes sense. Um, but, you know, with this, I, I'm not too worried. Like some people are saying, you're you're not playing this for the frame rate. You're playing it for the, the world and the lore and the ambiance and all of that and i i would agree like this is the kind of game where i think frame rate is less important than some others the big thing is certain combat types really benefit from higher uh, frame rates this i don't think like it would be nice but i don't think it's necessary and for me my preference is uh less graphical issues uh, less pop in less things like that I'm I would happily trade more stable frame rates for for that. Okay. Also, fun little tidbit. It looks like they're filming this on the sound stage. So presumably they're filming this on the same sound stage where they filmed all of the motion capture for the game, which is kind of fun. But I'm mean, all told it, it looks really good. And I, I was kind of bracing to see more of it and be like, oh, God, oh, no. Oh, God. It actually is looking better and better the more I see of it, which is high praise like the combat especially i think we were all worried it was just going to be button mash crap but you have like a, i think you said a full slot of 16 spells that you can quickly access all told and there's there's combos and parries and different shield types for different spells i was not expecting something like that so i'm i'm very pleasantly surprised i was not expecting something this robust one question i do think we should try to find out is if we can turn off the white outline on enemies i understand it's useful because it tells you what object you're aiming at and which object will be affected by the spell in question that is absolutely um something that's useful but i think for sake of immersion there is something to be said for like going in maybe decreasing the opacity of these things to like 50 percent, so you can kind of see through them a little bit like the mini map you can kind of see through the mini map and then going and turning off the mini map maybe turning off the quest objectives and turning off the white outline. I think that would just help with immersion. And he alluded to that, saying that there's a lot of like UI customization you can do. So we'll see. I do, I will say, little touches like this with the UI in the menus is a great touch. It's like, look at this. You select the challenges, look what happens. One fluid motion of opening the book and then the menus. And just this, so gear, so there will be gear. Uh, maybe it's customizing your wand, customizing potions you have, and maybe even your, your clothes have something to do with armor. I don't know. Inventory, pretty normal. You'd expect that. Talents, this he said what had to do with like specializing in certain spells, um, to make like cooldowns faster, things like that. So that's cool. Collections, this I would assume is, you know, your average collectibles. So that's kind of cool owl posts uh yeah i don't i don't know what owl post would mean it could be messages you've received but challenges also outlines most of that because i was gonna say owl post maybe it's like i don't know what would an owl post be for maybe missions i would think that would be in well no i guess because challenges combat these are like separate things well you have a quest you have a quest tab so Owl Post is different enough from Quests that they separated it. It's like Facebook for Hogwarts students. <laughs> you might not actually be wrong, Denny. Like, that might actually be what it is. 
I don't know what that would, would be, though. Oh, so that that is interesting. I, I, that's a question mark. I don't really know. Um, challenges, we saw this. Room of requirement, field guide pages, exploration, quests, combat, all that good stuff. I'm down for this. Uh, the fact that they have dedicated challenges around exploration excites me. Like, there's stuff outside that's that's beneficial enough for that. I like that. Map makes sense. A map to look around. Quests makes sense. Self-explanatory. Um, I'll post. I don't know what that is. But I feel like today they're giving a much clearer outline of what your regular gameplay session is going to be like. There's still some questions. Like they said, going to classes is based narratively. So presumably like through the main story there will be moments when it's like go to you know your potions class and just whenever you get around to it you get around to it uh, i i don't know how that would work with like oh i it said go to potions class and i dinked around for two in-game days exploring hogsmeade like is that gonna have a, a an effect or a negative effect on the mission or narratively i don't know it feels like it should man i i was not expecting to see this and be this like positive about it i was kind of bracing to be a little disappointed there's also options to remove the mini map oh, and cool. turn on or off different elements cool. turn on or off different elements it makes me wonder if it, he's saying turn on a compass turn off the mini map, turn on a compass or turn on a compass and the mini map. You know, I, I don't know, but if they built into the game, the ability to turn off the mini map, that to me suggests that they're confident enough in the quest design that they can tell you, Oh, I'll meet you in Hogsmeade at the barber. And they trust that you can find your way there without having a mini map leading you there. Which I, I think probably when we play this, we'll do like a hardcore playthrough where we turn off the unnecessary UI elements and we just try to get immersed as immersed as possible in 